Hi there, and welcome to Rhinosynth episode 4. Uh, this time I will rejuvenate the lovely Cork T2, and with that I mean I will replace the LCD with a bright green LED backlit LCD, and replace old tactile switches with new ones, and of course I will clean the bugger. The result? Oh, isn't that a nice green display? This isn't the first time I'm doing this, and in this episode I will show you what I think is a good way to do it. And as you will see, I will still make mistakes, so watch and learn. The procedure is very much the same uh, for other synths from the 90s that use a similar display, like the uh, Yamaha SY77 and 99, the EX5 and 7, the Cork 01W and the Wave Station, also those uh, entertainment boards I3 and I2 and 3, the Roland Wii 30, D70, A50, AT Master keyboards, uh, a lot of those synths use this LCD display. Along the way, I will expand on the differences between the M1 and the T-Series and some other tidbits I think are worth sharing. So without further ado, let's start. differences between the M1 and T series then. Well first off the T series can be regarded as what the M1 should have been from the beginning. So more sequence and memory, larger and therefore more usable display, a floppy disk to store your sequences on and a 76 and 88 piano keypad option with master keyboard features etc. So an another bit big difference with the M1 is that the T series has doubled the amount of sample ROM and can even load samples in RAM if you have that option installed. That's the uh, X. Uh, version, the EX version. The sound generation of the M1 and T series are exactly the same. They use the same sound generator ICs, the same filter ICs, the same effect ICs, and they also have the same same polyphony, 16 voice uh, polyphony. And as I said, the only difference is the amount of ROM, twice as much in the T series. And of the option, of course, to have sample RAM in the T series. <laughs> Thank you. 
The contrast of an LCD can slightly differ based on temperature and that's why with most LCDs you can control the contrast with a voltage. And on the T2 you can change that voltage using a small potentiometer on the audio and MIDI jack board. Well, the problem is that the new LCD uses a different voltage range to control the contrast compared to the old display. If I would not change anything, the display would not be clearly readable. So we have to change that. Long story short. By the addition of a 1 kilo ohm resistor to the existing circuit, we can change that range. And Cork even prepared the PCD, PCB for such a change and left two holes and solder pads to do this.
Essentially, there's an easy fix for a too bright LED backlight. Reduce the current going through the backlight LEDs. Um, the display I'm using has two LED sections, one on the left and one on the right, each consisting out of a LED, of course, and a current limiting resistor of 30 ohms. I did a quick measurement and the voltage drop across the LEDs is 2.8 volts, that makes a voltage drop of 2.2 volts across the resistors and therefore a current of about 75 milliamps per LED circuit, making 150 milliamps in total. Mm, right. Well, the simplest fix is to put an additional resistor in series, and I'm going to use a potentiometer so I can adjust the current and therefore the brightness. The potentiometer I'm using can dissipate up to half a watt, and in this circuit that should be more than enough. I'm going to make a small connector to which I'm going to solder the uh, potentiometer, so I don't need to uh, do too many clutches. Here we go. Thank you. 